In this video, we're going to learn about namespaces in C++. So when we give names to things like functions and classes and other things in our C++ programs, we like to use names that make sense. So for example, if we wanted a function to print things, we might call that function print, like this. But we can't create another print function with the same return value and the same parameters. So for example, if I try to say here void print, like this, and we try to save and run the program, we'll get an error here. It says redefinition of print. So if we're just writing a small C++ application, we can probably avoid this issue by carefully naming things. But in larger commercial C++ applications, we're typically including multiple libraries that do different things for our program. Like for example, perhaps access a database or connect to a network. In situations like these, each one of those libraries might want to use the same function names. Namespaces are a solution to this problem of potential name conflicts, where we can give names to functions and classes and other things within a named scope. Languages like C that don't have namespaces had to solve this problem in other ways. If we check out some C libraries, for example, this here is a curl library, and this here is a network library, we'll find that the functions will have these prefixes nn underscore in the case of this library for each one of these function names. And in the case of the curl library, we have curl underscore as a prefix to all of these function names. So in C, we use this library function name prefix convention to solve this issue in a less elegant way. In C++, we're given namespaces, which are a more flexible and powerful tool to solve this issue. So in C++, we can create our functions and other things within the scope of a namespace to avoid these name conflicts. So for example, I could say here, namespace raw. And we'll define this print function within the scope of the raw namespace. Then here I'll say namespace rounded. And we'll define this print function within the scope of the rounded namespace. Now, if I save and run the program, the error is gone and it's okay. And that's because the functions are each defined in a different namespace. Let's make these print functions actually print something out, like a number. We'll say here, double number, and this print function is gonna output print raw colon, and then the number, followed by an inline. We're gonna include the CMath library, which includes the round function. And this print function is also gonna output the number it's given as an argument, but it's gonna round the number before it prints it out. So we'll say C out print rounded colon. And this time we'll output the number after it's been rounded, followed by an inline. So now if we wanna call these different functions, we can't do it like this. I can't say print and then 25.6789. If we try this, we'll get an error. It says use of undeclared identifier print. And that's because those print functions are now defined within namespaces. If we wanna access them, we have to use the scope resolution operator. So we'll say raw colon colon print, and then rounded colon colon print 25.6789. And this colon colon operator here, that's the scope resolution operator. If we save and run our program now, we'll find that the first time the number is printed out, it's with the print raw function that outputs the number without being rounded. The second time it's printed out, we get that rounded number. So we're calling both functions now using this scope resolution operator. So instead of using the scope resolution operator, we could also say using namespace, and we could give the name of one of the namespaces here, like rounded. Then we could just say print, 25.6789, and if we save and run our program here, we'll see that it's the print function defined inside the rounded namespace that gets called, and we get this rounded value 26 here. Now this using namespace rounded is gonna have the scope of this main function. So if we made a function outside of main like this, and we tried to call print with 25.6789 again, this won't work. If we try to call that function here right now, 
We'll get an error. It says use of undeclared identifier print. We could take this out of the main function though and put it up here. Then we can use the print function in anything defined below that statement. So if we save it on our program now, it's going to work. Generally speaking, we should use a namespace in the smallest scope possible. So for example, if we only need to use the namespace rounded inside of the main function, we should put that using namespace rounded inside the main function. So we'll put it back there. Now, just because we're using namespace rounded doesn't mean we can't access the print function in the other namespace. We could just say raw colon colon print and then 25.6789 and we'll still be able to call the print function defined inside the raw namespace. Where we would have a problem is if we tried to use both namespaces. So if I said using namespace and then raw here, if we then try to call print without this scope resolution operator, if we try to save and run our program here, we're gonna end up with an issue that's very similar to what we saw before, where now we get that print is ambiguous. We may not always wanna use an entire namespace. Maybe there's too many things to find inside of it. What we could do instead is say using, and we'll say raw colon colon print. And what we're doing here is now using print specifically defined inside the raw namespace. So if we save and run our program here, we can use the print function like this without the scope resolution operator, but we're only using print from the raw namespace. We're not using anything else defined in the namespace. To access those things, we would have to say raw colon colon as we've done before. Now, one thing we can do as well is give an alias to a namespace. So we could say here is namespace rnd is equal to rounded. And now rnd becomes an alias for the rounded namespace. So we could then say rnd colon colon print 25.6789. And if we save and run our program, we're gonna find that we're using the rounded namespace version of the print function. Another thing we can do with namespaces is have a namespace inside of another namespace. So for example, inside of our rounded namespace here, we could create another namespace. We could say namespace and we'll call it inception. And then inside of this inception namespace, we could actually define another function. We'll actually just copy this here. Only with this version of the print function, we'll call it print inception. Now to use this print function defined inside the inception namespace inside of the rounded namespace, it's gonna be very similar to what we've been doing already. We'll say here, rounded inception print, and then 25.6789. And if we save and run our program, we're gonna find it's that print function defined inside the inception namespace which is itself defined inside the rounded namespace that gets called. So that's how we can define a namespace inside of another namespace. We can also use the using keyword with this namespace as well. We could say using namespace rounded colon colon inception. And then we could just use the print function like this. And if we save and run the program, we'll get that it's the inception version of the print function that's called. Now, if we keep defining namespaces inside of namespaces, our code could become hard to follow, especially if we keep on indenting each namespace. In modern versions of C++, we're given an additional way of defining a namespace within a namespace. We could say here, namespace rounded colon colon inception, and this would define this inception namespace within the rounded namespace, but allows our code to have less of the indenting problem that we had before. We could then call the function like this. We could say rounded inception print and save around our program and it's going to work. Or we could do it like we had it before, like this.
And again, we could save and run our program. And it's going to work. So these are the core ideas behind using namespaces in C++. There are some other namespace features I may cover in future videos. In particular, I may discuss the using namespace STD that is seen in many C++ tutorials, including many of my own. When we use using namespace STD, we're including many common names, and this can lead to problems. So while it's okay to do this in small programs like assignments and tutorials, in larger applications and commercial applications, this is generally speaking something we actually want to avoid. I'll talk about this more in a future video. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.